Hi, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so, I'll be talking about uh, stochastic processors, uh, design analysis, and challenges. So, um, uh, if you look at the brief history of computers, we can see that the computers were really large and bulky in the <coughs> in early 70s. They were somewhat sophisticated in 1900, um, and then uh, they became really small and uh, very efficient in the these days. Uh, two parts of the uh, uh, of the computers are the software and the hardware. Uh, if you look properly, the software in these systems uh, became bigger and complex, and the hardware became smaller and faster. Uh, so, what did not change in these computers? Uh, one thing is that Moore's law. Moore's law says that the number, the size of the transistors, appro uh, ha becomes half for every one and a half years. And uh, the, dem the demand for smaller chips uh, kept on increasing. <coughs> One of the things to be noticed is that Moore's law is not an actual science. It is the business model that, that, uh, that drives the science. So uh, the chips kept on getting smaller because of the demand of the smaller chips was more. And the cost of making the smaller chips was substantially decreasing. And thus, the manufacturers could make huge amounts of profit by making smaller and smaller chips. Um, another thing that remains unchanged is the contract between the software and the hardware. Traditionally, we assume that software passes on instructions to the hardware, and the hardware computes these instructions and gives out the results. We cannot tolerate any errors in the hardware. All the logic is put in the software, and if at all a program doesn't work properly, it's because of the problem in the logic, and that is the software, and we expect the hardware to be 100% correct. We don't expect any bugs in the hardware, and uh, you know how much Intel suffered because of the bug in the floating point division. <coughs> uh, another thing which we should notice is the non-determinism in the smaller transistors. When we make transistors even smaller and force the computation, the non-determinism in these transistors increases. So as a result, in order to make these transistors deterministic, what designers do is that they over-design and make these transistors behave in a deterministic manner. So all the uncertainties in the transistors are hidden because of the over-design, and that is what the software needs. So uh, let us take a look at the future of smaller transistors. So uh, we already have noticed that the non-deterministic behavior of smaller transistors increases. So and this results in over design <coughs> cost. Uh, these are the some of the statistics that uh, big companies like Texas Instruments, Philips, LSI, they don't have plans to manufacture transistors which are less than 45 nanometers length. Why? Because the cost of over design much is much more than the profits that they get by selling such small transistors. Only Intel and Samsung have 22 nanometer plans. So uh, this is a recent uh, uh, picture. Uh, it can be seen that uh, though only, only a, a specific part of demand for uh, transistors less than 0 0.045 microns is more, and relatively all the other transistors have uh, stable demand, and that's why the profits of selling them are uh, pretty stable. <coughs> so, what is the status? If we want to manufacture smaller transistors, we need to address the question of non-determinism in the chip. Um, one way, one of the alternatives which we are proposing is to do stochastic processors. So, <coughs> we don't consider the hardware to be deterministic. We allow hardware to perform wrong computation. That is, we tolerate the hardware to be erroneous. It's pretty good. Sorry for that. Um, it is just that the software applications that we develop are aware of the uh, stochasticity, in, is aware of the stochasticity in the hardware, and adapts to that. So software knows about the errors in the hardware, and it, to some extent, software can even control the, uh, the stochasticity in the hardware. And in that way, we can even build smaller transistors. 
and uh, uh, we can develop stochastic applications. So, the research, the goal of our research is to uh, design stochastic hardware, design stochastic uh, software and then get it running. So, what are the clear steps for that? First, we need to build a model for stochastic computing. Then, we need to estimate the um, <coughs> uncertainty that is in the hardware. That is, it is not enough if we just build hardware that is stochastic. We need to exactly quantify how much of the stochasticity is there in the hardware. Then, we need to build up mechanism for design of software and finally, it is the testing and implementation phase. So, in this talk, I will be talking about a model for stochastic computing and the techniques for estimation of that. So, um, let us get started on the model. Um, so, the stochasticity in a device we are considering is in the delay in input values. Suppose that we have a device which takes a set of inputs and gives an output. Uh, we assume a delay associated with each of the inputs and uh, the delay <coughs> the delay is a reflection of the time taken for the input to get reflected at the output. So, uh, if you have n inputs for each and uh, if you have an input for a device at each cycle, a delay is associated with it, with the input. Say in, in, the, in the given figure, uh, assume that uh, uh, block f is the AND of the three inputs that we get, that is f is the output y is x1 and x2 and x3. We can see that there is a delay d associated with y changing from 0 to 1, even when x1 and x2, uh, x1, x2 and x3, all, these, all the three change to 1. This is because of the delays uh, and these delays are generated from a delay distribution that is predefined as gamma. So, uh, <coughs> this is how a stochastic device behaves. At each cycle, an input from each of the sources is generated. The value uh, in each of the cases is V1, V2, V3 and a delay at for each source with the <coughs> a delay D1 is generated according to the distribution gamma 1 and is inserted into this Q. This Q represents that the set of inputs that are yet to be processed. It is because the delays associated with each of the inputs is stochastic in nature. Uh, we, do, we, we need to maintain uh, a data structure for uh, representing the <coughs> inputs that are yet to be computed. So, um, when new inputs arrive, what we do is uh, we have uh, a delay uh, a delay is generated from the distribution gamma and uh, if the uh, if the observed delay is more than the elements in the queue then we add it to the end of the queue and if the delay that is generated is less than or uh, equal to the elements in the queue then we drop all the elements in the queue that uh, that have delay more than it this is just to maintain causality as uh, we think that the later inputs with smaller delays will wipe out the earlier input with larger delays. So, um, um, uh, whenever time lapses, we assume that uh, the delay values in each of the elements in the queues will be decreased by 1 and uh, whenever an element has a delay value 0, it means that it is time for that particular input to be processed to the output and that is why um, uh, we remove that element from the queue and set the particular auxiliary variable to that part, to the particular input given at that time. So, <coughs> uh, we have also observed that a stochastic device defined in this way with precise semantics will be a Markov chain. Now, uh, uh, in the figure we are showing a stochastic circuit which is just but uh, which is nothing but a combination of several stochastic devices. So, uh, to precisely define what is the correctness of a stochastic circuit, what we do is we give inputs every k cycle and observe the number of times a particular in <coughs> the particular output generated from the stochastic circuit is correct. That is first we say that okay, uh, we define a particular value of uh, k and we, we fix the input for those set of k cycles and at the end of k cycles we check whether the stochastic circuit gave the correct output or not. If it did not, then we consider the, uh, the device to give out a wrong output. If it is, then we increase the number of, uh, uh, the number of times the correct output is observed. The ratio of the number of times correct output is observed by the total number of observations we make is nothing but the measure of the number of times 
the circuit produces correct results and that is nothing but the correctness factor. We define this particular element as the correctness factor of a stochastic circuit. Now, having defined the model and having defined how to estimate the correctness of a stochastic circuit, we proceed by techniques for uh, <coughs> techniques for calculating this correctness factor. So, uh, the technique we use is probabilistic model checking. Probably many of you might not have heard this term before. Uh, it is it is a technique. Uh, so, okay. <coughs> the input to stochastic probabilistic model checking is a stochastic process and it explores all possible paths and it is a push button technique. So, it, it somewhat works like this. We have a, st we have a stochastic process, we, verif we give a formal specification of it and give it to probabilistic model checker and we have a property that we want the stochastic process to satisfy. The probabilistic model checker will take the input as a stochastic process and a property and will tell whether the answer is yes or no or if the property has something to do with, if, if the property is asking a question about what is the probability of something happening in this process, then it will give us a correct answer. Uh, an example of this would be um, a fair <coughs> dice game with a fair coin. This particular process shown is a description of a dice game and we are using only uh, a fair coin to uh <coughs> to generate a fair dice game. So, the type of questions we ask probabilistic model checker is can I roll 1 with probability more than 1 by 6 and the answer given by probabilistic model checker is no you cannot. You can also ask the question what is the probability of rolling 3. The, the probabilistic model checker will give us the answer as 1 by 6 and uh, <coughs> what is the probability of rolling any number except 2, 3 and 5 it will tell us half. So, these are the uh, similar type of questions can be asked to a probabilistic model checker. What we did was um, <coughs> we, we used the prism model checking tool, we modeled the stochastic circuit, stochastic devices as uh, Markov chains and we asked okay, what is the probability of uh, getting the correct output in the long run and that is how we calculated the correctness factors for various, uh, uh, for various circuits. Uh, this is a particular example of the correctness factor and this increase is uh, with respect to the latching time and uh, we can also see that uh, for some <coughs> for some of the functions like AND and OR the correctness factor is significantly more than other, other uh, inputs like XOR and uh, uh, XOR and 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 uh, these are uh, similar observations with different parameters. We, we tweak the parameters of the Markov chain and we get different results. So, <coughs> uh, in conclusion, we have a strict mathematical model for stochastic devices. We have formal, sem formal semantics for complex circuits and uh, we have also techniques for the of correctness factor for various devices. Uh, the future work is to uh, scalable the model checking approaches like the mod model checking cracks at very elementary circuits. What we want to think of is to uh, scale the particular model checking approach to larger circuits. Also a uh, circuit is composed of large number of uh, stochastic devices and thus elements from compositional verification can be uh, put into um, verification of large circuits. Also we want to know about the lower bounds and the limits of stochastic computation with uh, the power constraints. So, uh, this is this ends up the future work. Um, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, so the, the what I have not mentioned in the presentation is that we, we consider a particular type of input sources. So, the input sources are assumed to be randomly giving out either 0 or 1 with some probability. So, that is the type of input sources that we consider. Uh, uh, can you, can you, with the Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 
yeah, so we assume that there is uh, some delay associated with each of the inputs and that is generated from a random distribution. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what we did was we simulated the model as well, like several times, maybe for a thousand runs, and uh, what the what figures that we got from probabilistic model checking and uh, simulation runs they both match. So. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, probabilistic model checking is much more accurate than simulations. So the the value we get from probabilistic model checking is much more reliable than what we get from the simulation. So uh, we couldn't scale beyond composition of two devices. Like, um, so say we can we can compose three AND gates and that's it. The 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 uh, probabilistic model checking engine that breaks down at that point of time. So. The scalability in this case is pretty less. So what we are trying to do is maybe uh, do compositional verification to increase the scalability.